Hey everyone, this is Zephyr. If you've seen the BaileyWiki family of modules with deployable buildings that you can add to any scene, activatable traps, example scenes with quick encounters, and a whole lot more, but aren't quite sure how to get started or have just picked up the modules, then this video is for you. First, we'll walk through the installation process. To first get started, you'll want to have the BaileyWiki installation guide and FAQ handy. We'll have this linked in the comments. It's also available on the Discord in the FAQ channel. If you don't already have the BaileyWiki premium modules, then you'll need to become a patron. You can click on the Become a Patron button right there, and there's always the link to the Patreon in the description. In order to get access to the Foundry premium modules, it's just $7 a month at the brick and mortar tier. If you're interested in getting access to the full library of archived dungeon draft files, then check out the Spline and Grid tier. Returning to the installation guide and FAQ, you can navigate through this by using the table of contents at the beginning of the guide or through the navigation side panel on the left. This has all of these great overviews. We're going to focus mainly on the foundry setup. Here, there's a brief description of each of the three premium modules. We have Maps Premium, Maps Premium Towns, and the Cabal Dungeon. Maps Premium is mostly detailed maps that are already seen as opposed to a large collection of deployable assets, though there are things like the ships and airships and those vehicles. The Premium Towns has the modular town system and also the modular castle. Cabal Dungeon is a community project that has a lot of great modular dungeons, and it is used in part of the example scenes included in the Premium Towns module, specifically the ones for the town in order to install the links, you'll want to have the main Patreon posts bookmarked. If you are a Forge user, then you can subscribe to the modules directly through the Forge Bazaar. However, if you are a self-hosted user, then you'll need to use the main Foundry post, which is the second link here, and it will take you directly to the Patreon post with the installation links that are updated monthly. Before actually installing the modules, you want to go through the installation setup process. There's four main steps to this. Installing the required third-party modules, and you can check out the example module loadouts for configuration options, and the required and recommended modules section for detailed descriptions of each module. Within the example module loadouts, we have three example configurations here. They're pretty self-explanatory in their names. All the bells and whistles, high performance mode, and bare bones. With all the bells and whistles, it has every module that we leverage in the BaileyWiki family of modules. So if you want all of the fancy tricks, all of the great visuals, and all of the functionality in the modules, then this is the loadout for you. If you have some performance issues, then the high performance mode keeps all of the technical modules, but it does cut out Parallaxia, FX Master, and Token Magic FX. While we love these modules for the visual impact they can bring, they're not providing the same mechanical changes that things like multi-level tokens and levels provides. So for that reason, these can be cut with the most minimal impact in terms of the utility that the BaileyWiki modules have, while also reducing performance costs. Bare Bones is the final loadout. This really trims down on the different features that can be used. For example, we'll cut out the ability to have multi-story buildings that are layered on top of each other directly in a scene. While Token Attacher and Lib Wrapper are the only two true dependencies of the BaileyWiki family of modules, multi-level tokens is used so much for traps and being able to move between scenes that it is kind of a key piece of functionality. And then Scene Packer and Compendium Folders are integral to having an easy setup process, and we really don't recommend going without those, especially given how small a performance impact that they have. Also on the module loadouts, you'll notice that two of the modules have asterisks next to them, Molinet and Quick Encounters. Molinet is actually a suite of modules that allows for easier browsing of your assets. This is a great feature on its own, but the main reason why we recommend Molinet is for its cloud integration ability. You have to be a patron of Molinet as well in order to use this feature, but it's pretty great. If you have a Molinet and a BaileyWiki Patreon subscription, then you can drag in prefabs and scenes that are the most up-to-date without having to update the modules themselves or keep track of your compendiums and imported actors. There's a lot that Molinet can do, 
And if you're interested in seeing if that module is for you, I highly recommend you check out the two other videos that BaileyWiki put out about Molinet specifically. For Quick Encounters, it is a system agnostic tool for allowing dungeon masters to create pre-built encounters for their players. That being said, we've only made Quick Encounters on example scenes for 5e. So if you're not using the 5e system, we still recommend Quick Encounters for your own use, but you will not see any additional functionality in the BaileyWiki modules right now. Once you've settled on a module loadout, it's time to actually install the required and recommended modules. You can do this by going directly to the GitHub's and Foundry pages that are linked on the FAC and installation guide, or by using the Foundry module installation tool within Foundry itself, like I'm going to do here, or if you're a Forge user, you can subscribe to these modules through the bazaar. Once you've installed all of the required and recommended modules for your loadout, it's time to install the BaileyWiki modules themselves. There's a nice graphical and visual reminder here in the installation FAQ for self-hosted users. If you're on the Forge, you'll actually be able to install the Maps Premium and Maps Premium Towns modules directly through the bazaar once you've linked your Patreon to your Forge account. However, to install the modular dungeon, you will need to follow this same process, so it's good to have this handy. There's also a graphic that discusses what you should have imported and what you should only import as you need it. More on that later. To install the modules on a self-hosted system, you'll first need to go to the main Foundry posts on Patreon. On the Foundry posts, you'll find installation links that have the module.json files for all three modules. These are updated monthly whenever we have a major release. You'll copy and paste these links into the add-on modules window within Foundry's setup, and you're gonna do that at the bottom bar rather than in the top at the search. Once you have it copy and pasted, then you'll just hit install module and it will install it for you. Repeat this process for all three modules if you're a self-hosted user, and if you're a Forge user, you'll only need to do this for the modular dungeon. You should install the other two modules through the Forge Bazaar to make sure you're using as little space on your instance as possible. After you've installed all of the modules, it's time to activate them. Go into your new or existing world, visit your settings directory, and select Manage Modules. Here, I recommend activating the modules in two phases. First, activate all of the required and recommended modules that you selected in your loadout. Accept any confirmations that come up, and make sure that everything with your instance is looking good. After you've activated all of your loadouts modules, it's time to activate the BaileyWiki modules. Go through and activate those. Now you'll get a pop-up from ScenePacker, asking if you want to import the entities from the different BaileyWiki modules. You'll notice that this is a pretty large number. This would import all of the actors, scenes, and other pieces from the modules. Because this is so much content to bring in, we recommend you actually decline this or only select certain scenes. So I'm going to cancel it here, and instead I will be importing things manually. The final piece of setup before actually making use of the BaileyWiki modules is to import all of the macros. To import any content for the BaileyWiki modules, you need to go into your compendiums directory. Sometimes they don't show up in the appropriate folders, so make sure to check your default if it looks like they're missing. You can see there's a bunch of different folders here, and I'm going to look at the macros for Premium Towns. Premium Towns has all of the macros for all three modules, although the other two do copy some of them. But if you import all of them from Towns, you'll be good to go. I'm going to go in, and I'm going to go ahead and just select Import All Content. Once you have all of the macros in, there are a couple that I definitely recommend you keep handy on your hotbar, as you want them for scene building and troubleshooting. Those are the Token Attacher Quick Edit Mode Toggle, and the Token Attacher Delete Missing Links. If you happen to move a prefab or delete it before it's actually fully rendered in, you'll have some weird pieces that you can't interact with, and you'll need to delete those as broken links with that second macro. The first macro is useful for tweaking things on the fly in your scenes. Now that all of the macros are in, it's time to actually enjoy the scenes from BaileyWiki modules. 
So if we go into here the town scenes, I can import either scenes individually or as a whole folder thanks to compendium folders. So I'm going to import the content from some of these samples and then take a look. Once you've imported your scenes, you'll just select view scene or activate as normal to bring up the scene. You'll notice that there are a lot of different scenes in here with all of the new releases that have things laid out as well as some example scenes here from the castles. So I'm loading in the Gothic castle level one. And you'll notice that when I load this in, I'll have a little blue notification bar indicating that journals are being imported and unpacked and map notes are being created. That scene packer going in and looking in the data for this scene to know which journals to bring in. And you'll see that all of these journals are actually completely filled in. Whereas if you don't have scene packer, these map notes would break on compendium import. And you can see here that if I go into my journals directory, all of the journals have been imported and the folder structure has been maintained. And I have all of these creatures from the D&D 5e uh, creatures compendium that are used for the quick encounters in this scene. So all of the quick encounters work properly and I'm ready to add those into combat and enjoy those and I can delete them or use them as I need. Some of the things you may want to do is go into your configure settings and tweak some things. Each of the BailiWiki modules has prompts to automatically force re-import the compendiums just in case something goes strange with an import. You probably won't need that, but just in case. One thing that you would probably like to do is in levels, you can disable the advanced tooltips so that you won't have the pop-ups giving the height of everything. This is useful for building, but when you're actually running a session, it's not as necessary. So you may want to turn that off to have a less cluttered screen. You'll notice that journal entries are really important on some of these example scenes. An important thing that you need to do as a GM and also instruct your players to do is go into the journals tool on the left-hand side and make sure that they have map notes enabled. You'll notice that if I have it off, it's a dimmer purple. And then if I leave the journals section, I don't actually see any of the map notes. It's really important for these MLT zones that are powered by map notes for teleportation and things that give really good information to you as a GM. So make sure both you and your players have that setting enabled or they won't see the teleport zones for the stairs. The other really great feature with the Beta Wiki modules is having prefab structures that you can drop into any scene. If you're gonna use a multi-story one, then you wanna go into your walls and use the wall off scene feature. Otherwise, levels won't work quite as well because of how it handles site calculations. So do that on any scenes you're gonna use prefabs on before you get started. To bring in prefabs, go into your compendiums and find the modular towns prefabs. Here, I'm gonna drag in a snowy farmhouse onto this blank scene just to give an idea. You can move it by selecting the control token and moving it into the position that you want. Then if you want to be able to navigate the levels easily, go into your levels tool and it will bring up the dialog. If you use the edit button, then you can get levels from the scene and the prefabs will be able to communicate with the levels config what the levels are. And here I can go through then with the levels config, the basement to the first floor and above. For more information on levels, check out the other videos on the channel about the module. Now I want to get into some more specific troubleshooting tips. A common issue will be if you delete a prefab, some things still appear on your screen. The most common issue here is not that something is actually left behind, but that Foundry is still rendering things. Usually this is fixed by doing a quick refresh with F5 or Control slash Command R, depending on if you're on PC or Mac. This will refresh your scene, and you'll notice that now when I go to my walls tool, all of these walls that were here from this prefab are no longer there. If you still have it persist, then make sure to use that delete missing links macro that we mentioned earlier. Another possible issue is a module conflict. You'll notice that here, even on my blank scene, it's not actually showing me the scene, and if I try to switch over to my modular castle scene, that I'm getting an error there. It's loading, but then it's never actually switching to the scene. This is something that would normally indicate a module conflict. The way that we like to handle these is with a great module called Find the Culprit. You'll notice that if I go into my Manage Modules, I actually have a button that says Find the Culprit. That's from the module. Once you've installed that module, then 
it works really well for being able to troubleshoot these instances. It's a pretty basic concept. When I select find the culprit, it's going to ask me what I want to be my control modules. Here, I'm going to select the main BaileyWiki modules, and then basically everything for the all the bells and whistles, except for Mullinet. I do have some other modules in here, so it's important to double check those. From there, find the culprit is going to disable every other module, just to make sure that my controls aren't the problem. Here, I can tell it they're not, so I tell it that my problem does not persist as I'm able to go back and forth between the blank scene and the gothic castle scene. Then what it will do is it will re-enable half of the modules that it disabled before. It's going to ask if it persists or not. Here it doesn't, so then it's going to leave those same modules that just activated active, then activate another half of the modules. And it's going to continue this process until you narrow it down to only one module that's causing the problem, and then you can disable it. Here the problem was roofs and overhead tiles, which was the old module that was used in Foundry 0.7 and earlier to give us roofs and overhead functionality. That's been deprecated in 0.8 and will actually cause issues now, so make sure you have that disabled. Once I disable that, everything's working great and I can continue to use my instance. This is a really great way to troubleshoot any issues you have with modules, whether they're related to the BaileyWiki modules or not. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. I hope that this has answered all of your setup questions about how to get started and use the BaileyWiki family of modules. If you have any questions, please feel free to pop into the Discord or let us know in the comments down below. If there's other things that you think that we missed, please let us know. I'd be happy to do a follow-up. Thanks again and have a great day. This has been Zephyr.